Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football dropping vlogs, videos and podcasts on the beautiful game. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV, including special feature segments, 5 Minutes with the G, The Straight Shooting View, Coaching with JBK, we produce, record and edit video content, and audio on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Verbal, Podomatic, Anchor, Spotify and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk revolution on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and www.pitch-talk.com The pitch is where we eat, the pitch is where we sleep and the pitch is where we talk. The Straight Shooting View Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Straight Shooting LJA and welcome to another episode of The Straight Shooting View. Now, in this episode... I want to look at leadership by example and hypocrisy in football. Two things that kind of relate to the World Cup but also relate to the Premier League as well. Now, recently Jurgen Klopp was fined £30,000 by the um, by the FA in regards to his outburst at a fourth official during the Liverpool versus Manchester City match. He proper got up in, uh, embarrassingly, proper got up in the um, fourth official's face. And I think it was Anthony Taylor, who was the referee at the time, sent him off. And the images still and moving, or otherwise, of Jurgen Klopp literally right screaming at this fourth official did not look good. And... This is a problem that many managers are involved in and many managers indulge in, especially at Premier League level. And it's kind of one of them ones where, I said, leadership by example for me. Now, love Jurgen Klopp, love what I see of him as a person, as a football manager, but it is one of them ones where if you're going to call one out, you got to call all out. And there are certain managers who do not show a good example to managers lower down and also fans lower down as well. Not just children, I mean adults as well, full grown adults. Because a lot of people take their example or even sometimes their moral compasses from footballers and football managers. And whatever they do, they will copy. So... It's one of them where it's where it's like there or there is always this kind of what aboutism, especially in Premier League football, where we used to have Jose Mourinho, whenever his sides used to be beaten, he just used to throw everybody under the bus. And it's like, dude, that's not a good example to set. Jurgen Klopp be rating an official, like literally ah, all that. Not a good example to set. I understand heat at the moment. Fully understand it as an amateur league player myself. I get annoyed at refs. I get annoyed at other players trying with simulation and all that. But it is one of them ones where it's where when you're being when your image and likeness is being beamed across millions of televisions in millions of homes at any given time, you do have to keep yourself in check. And yes, football is an emotional game. Very much relies on emotion and especially tribalism. And the sad thing is that tribalism ends up letting people kind of try and... It, it enables people to try and excuse things that otherwise would not be acceptable. So if, say, for instance, a football manager was to walk into a Sainsbury's or a Tesco's or an Audi or a Lidl, whichever, and start berating someone because a item was out of stock people wouldn't have it and it's like you'd get like maybe another store colleague over you get security to forcibly remove that person so you wouldn't behave like that in real life nor would people accept it in real life but because it's on a football pitch and it's in that heat of a moment people accept it and that is a strange that is the strange thing i said about that tribalism because a lot of people like especially with the introduction of var i'm not going to go into var and the positives negatives not going to go into that done that on many a straight shooting view episode but 
a lot of people feel that VAR decisions, if it goes against their team, they have the right to go and abuse someone on social media. And ab like abusing referees, saying F this, F that. And threatening families and that kind of thing. And it's like, you don't think the referees are already under enough pressure. It's like, one, one, one podcast I actually have gotten into is Sacked in the Morning. And managers come on and managers talk about sometimes buddying up to a referee, sometimes knowing they're not going to get anything from a referee, so not even trying and that kind of thing. And it's that, that podcast, to be honest, is very interesting insight into that side of the game. But then you also get the High Performance Podcast episode with Anthony Taylor, which I reviewed, about the pressures of refereeing in the modern game at the very top level. And there's a lot of pressure there because you're literally never praised for getting decisions right, but you're always buried 10 times over for getting it wrong by everyone. Fans, media, managers, pundits, everyone. So being a referee is an unenviable task at the best of times. And then you come down to grassroots level. We recently released a special feature segment about grassroots referees being assaulted and it coming to the point where the FA is going to bring in a trial of grassroots football refer level referees wearing body-worn cameras. And you know what? Part of why it's got to that is because I think some people see the example set in the Premier League and think they can apply that to grassroots, where there's no VAR, there's no cameras, there's no protection for referees. Again, I've done a Straight Shooting View episode saying that grassroots referees need protection. And it's one of them was people applying that kind of behaviour, that's where it starts getting dangerous in grassroots. And referees are legitimately, legitimately at risk. And they're the most vulnerable and they've got the least help. So in terms of, I said, leadership by example, Frank Lampard's comments really annoyed the hell out of me in regards to this. Because he said, oh, there's no correlation between, um, a, between the behaviour of managers at Premier League level and grassroots level. And it's like, dude, really? Where do you think most people get the idea to try a Penenka from? From, from the pro levels. From the top level, like the Ronaldo chop, the Cruyff turn, but also the Mourinho thing of blaming the referee, submitting frivolous referee referee reports. It's one of them. It's it's like, oh, like making a mockery of sectional strength rules. Those in the amateur leagues will know what I'm talking about with that. It's like all of this to gain an edge, and you see it at pro level at the tippy top at the Premier League where there's millions, billions on the line. But then I said that filters down because that example is set at the very top. And people think, well, if you can get away with it at the top, why can't I get away with it too? So it's on them. That, that's the messed up thing for me. And I think punishments like £30,000 and no touchline ban for Jurgen Klopp, I'm a Liverpool supporter and you guys know that. I don't want the Jurgen Klopp to get a touchline ban, but for what he did, he deserved it. So him escaping the touchline ban and only getting a small fine, it's essentially advocating that behaviour indirectly. It's like UEFA giving more of a fine for Man City turning up late onto a pitch than for a club like CSKA in Moscow racially abusing Yaya Toure. And that happened back in 2013. And it's like, you're, ba you're basically, you're literally indirectly encouraging the behaviour. So, I said it's that leadership by example. And staying with that topic of leadership by example, you've got pun certain pundits who like to shoot their mouths off, like Gary Neville. And Gary Neville, as you will know from being a regular listener to the Straight Shooting View, if you are, Gary Neville toes that Sky Sports Company line, but also when the Super League thing came up, he was quick to shoot his mouth off. But oh, the Glazers, this is a criminal act by them. It's like, yeah, but your paymasters at Sky Sports are directly responsible for the Premier League, which was a breakaway league in the first place. So, yeah, the hypocrisy. That's the second place where I was going to go to. Because we're seeing some really odd things popping up in regards to the Qatar World Cup, which starts in a few weeks. 
Gary Neville is one of, for me, the biggest hypocrites in football. And I said back, I said back what, a year and a half ago about him towing the Sky Sports company line. I also said, I said, I said in late 2020 about him towing the Sky Sports company line and being an absolute hypocrite. I also said in regards to the Super League thing, him being an absolute, absolute hypocrite. And in both those occasions, He's calling out of he's calling out, oh yeah, these owners, oh, blah, blah. and he's calling it out as a criminal act, and he's calling out broadcasters, but not mentioning his paymasters. And then it's like you're talking out of both sides of your neck. But he's taken it to a new level recently. Him and David Beckham, I'll throw Beckham in there too. Because David Beckham, cast your minds back, he was part of the England bidding team for Russia 2018. And we all remember what happened there. See the Pitch Talk Live episodes from 2011 and late 2010 for more in-depth discussion on that. But England got eliminated with two votes in the first round and they had the best technical bid for that 2018 World Cup and Russia got it. Here's your brown paper bag. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Blau, for doing business with us. Same with Qatar 2022. And it is hilariously ironic and absolutely hypocritical that David Beckham is a spokesperson for Qatar. Let that marinate. David Beckham, part of the England 2018 bid, World Cup bidding team that got shafted, is an ambassador for Qatar 2022. Selling out your morals for money, eh, Davey boy? Same with Gary Neville. Selling out your morals. Because Gary Neville recently... He's had David Beckham on his Overlap podcast and it's one of them ones didn't question him once about, the, about Qatar and the human rights record. So already, no credibility for me. And now recently, in the last, couple, last week or two, he signed up to do coverage as well as being a pundit on ITV, being a pundit on Qatari-owned Be In Sports. This guy really does love selling out for money, doesn't he? Gary Neville seems to love selling out his morals and values for money. Because <laughs> uh, the thing is, he said, oh, well, oh, I'm going on that platform. to, and, and you know what? If the opportunity arises, I'm going to speak out about Qatar and the human rights violations and abuses. And the my God, no, you're not, son. No, you're not. You're taking their money. Millions, thousands, whatever they're paying you. You're taking their money. You are a stooge. And you know what? You have no credibility in my view. I don't give a damn how good a pundit you are. You're a disgrace. Because on one side, oh, yeah, I mean, Qatar's human rights record is, no, it's not good. It's not good. Oh, you're offering me money being. Oh, oh you're owed by Qatari. I don't care about that. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'll take your money. Nah, bro, it doesn't work like that. Dude's trying to act like he's, oh, he's going to infiltrate from the inside and destroy him from... No, dude, no. It's, and it's like, if Qatar's human rights record comes up as a subject, dude, no. If you, if you were that committed to bringing it up as a subject, subject and you were that committed to justice, you'd be bringing it up. Even if you were taking their money, you'd be bringing it up. Because you'd be using your platform for good. Like a Marcus Rashford. Like a Wilfred Zaha. And no, Gary Neville, you're not in that league. Nah, talking out both sides of your neck. So, it's one of them ones where both of them, Gary Neville and David Beckham, no credibility for me in regards to Qatar. No credibility. At all. Shout out to Hummel as well. It's one of them ones, the Danish sponsors. Because at least they're stepping up and trying to do something. But... I discussed that on a previous episode of the Straight Shooting View as well, about Denmark's protest shirts. Yeah, a lot of hypocrisy, a lot of people talking out of both sides of their necks. But you know what? I have been Straight Shooting LJ, and I want to know your views. Let me know. www.pitchstatstalk.com is the official website. 
You can find everything there, our podcasts, links to videos. You can find out about more info about the four of us who make up Pitch Talk, the G-Man, JBK, Nathan Arsenal, and yours truly, Straight Shooting LJA. Also, also, youtube.com forward slash Pitch Talk for all of our videos, at Pitch Talk on Twitter and Instagram as well. Tweet with us, follow us, see what we're up to. Also, with Instagram, you can catch vlog and podcast previews and much, much more. Also, at Pitch Talk on Reddit. We're also on TikTok as well. Facebook.com forward slash Pitch Talk. Become a fan, become a friend, become a member of the group. Join the footballing revolution we are working so hard to create. Also, as well, hey, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We are on TuneIn Radio, Player FM, Verbal, V-U-R-B-L, Verbal Ambassadors and Proud to Be So. Also, Ghana, G-A-A-N-A as well. Wherever you find your podcast, find the Pitch Talk podcast. Give us a like, subscribe, rating, share, everything, but it all helps. I have been Straight Shooting LJA, and for another episode of the Straight Shooting View, let's go with Mario on my shirt. See you later, peeps. Thanks for your time. Join the Pitch Talk Revolution. Check out the official Pitch Talk website. www.pitch-talk.com Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football dropping vlogs, videos and podcasts on the beautiful game. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV, including special feature segments, 5 Minutes with the G, The Straight Shooting View, Coaching with JBK, we produce, record and edit video content, and audio on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Verbal, Podomatic, Anchor, Spotify and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk Revolution on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and www.pitch-talk.com. The pitch is where we eat. The pitch is where we sleep. And the pitch is where we talk. I can see you now.